Hello, I'm Rich Finelli, and welcome back to Mastering CSS, Section 6, Becoming Responsive. Up to this point, we've built almost everything with a fixed size. Our layout had a fixed width, our images had fixed widths, our menu had a fixed width. This is not going to deliver a good experience to phones, tablets, and the multitude of device sizes that are out there. Luckily, Responsive Web Design is here to transform our static website into a fluid, mobile website. There are three main pillars of responsive web design. Fluid grids, flexible images, and media queries. We'll discuss those three fundamental CSS foundations of responsive web design, as well as how to build accommodations for the primary navigation on mobile, and finally the viewport meta tag. In this video, we'll discuss the first of the three main components of responsive web design, the fluid grid, or percentage-based layout. We'll look at converting a fixed width layout to a fluid grid, and to do this, we'll learn the formula for converting pixels to percentages. Right now, we have a fixed width layout. If I shrink the browser, you can see how it breaks, quite obviously, at smaller sizes. Creating a fluid grid is the first step in fixing this. The goal is to change all our pixel widths, as well as left and right margins, and left and right padding to percentages. I'm going to ignore the nav for now and we'll circle back to that in a later video. We'll start with the div that I use to wrap a lot of the content, which is the wrapper class. I'm going to change the property width to max width. This is saying that this element can be smaller than 960 pixels wide, but it can't be any wider than that. I'm also going to set the width to 90%. So this is saying make the width 90% of its parent element which has no width. So it'll be 90% of the browser window. This will give it a 5% gutter on either side at widths narrower than 960 pixels wide. All right, let's look at the site in the browser. So we'll refresh that and we'll make it smaller again. And you can see that really doesn't have a dramatic effect and it kind of still, you know, looks pretty bad. Now we want to make these elements inside the wrapper percentages as well. Since we're starting with fixed pixel widths, we can convert all to a percentage using a formula, target divided by context equals result. The target is the desired width of our element. The context is typically the width of the parent element. The result is the percentage we can plug into our CSS. So if we scroll down, or really if we look at our HTML, you know, we can see here's the wrapper, and there's two divs inside of it, intro content and go premium. So our first element is the intro content, which is the section that appears inside of the wrapper. The target here is 600 pixels. The context is 960 pixels. So I'll break out my calculator here and I'll do 600 divided by 960 equals 0 0.625. So I'll plug that in as my width, I'll add a percentage as my unit of measure, and I'll move the decimal point over two places. So that comes out to 62.5%. It's a good practice to keep the original formula in a CSS comment because the chances are good you'll need it later. This tells me that the element was originally 600 pixels wide and the parent element was originally 960 pixels wide. This is especially useful when you have to convert child elements to a percentage using this formula. Now the margin right needs to be a percentage too. The formula remains the same. Target divided by context equals result. So our target is 60 pixels. Our context is still 960 pixels, the parent element, which is the wrapper. So we'll use our calculator. 60 divided by 960 is 0 0.0625. I'll command C and then paste that in and I'll convert this also to percentage by moving the decimal point over two places, and we have 6.25%. Next up is our call to action buttons container, Go Premium. With a width of 300 pixels, that needs to be a percentage. So let's do the same thing. We'll get our calculator back, 300 divided by 960. We still have the same parent here, is 0.3125. I'll command C that and paste it in place move the decimal point over, add percentage, and then I will put that in a CSS comment over to the right, in case I need it later. 
Now, I think we're ready to look at this in the browser. If I refresh and make it smaller, this looks a lot better. The intro content and the call to action button are getting narrower as the browser window gets smaller. Eventually, they start to overlap, but that's okay. At least we have a fluid foundation for this top section. Now, we have to go and take a look at these three columns underneath of it. They are kind of breaking as the window gets smaller. So let's take a look at the HTML for this. This is our secondary sections. And these three columns are also inside of a div with a class of wrapper that was also originally 960 pixels wide. So we'll continue to use that as our context while we convert our dot column width from pixels to percentage. All right, so all the way down here at the bottom, each column is 300 pixels wide. So 300 divided by 960, we already know is 31.25% because that's the same exact calculation we used just before this. Now the margin left is 30 pixels. So we're actually going to copy and paste this down here, but we'll move the decimal place over one and we'll say 30 divided by 960. And just for fun, we'll just to prove it out, we'll do the math on that one too, just to be sure. 30 divided by 960 is 0 0.03125. Okay, so I was correct there. Now, we do have a margin left of zero on the first column. I don't have to change zero to a percentage because zero, zero pixels, and zero percent are all the same exact thing, nothing. As a side note, I never changed any heights or top or bottom margins and padding because that just didn't really matter to us. So now if we refresh this section, and we make this smaller, we can see now our three columns are shrinking proportionately as our browser window shrinks. So everything now on our home page is fluid except for our nav, which I'm going to leave as is for now. I want to handle that totally differently, so we'll leave it as a fixed width. We never had to change a padding left or right to a percentage, but the process to do so is very similar. You use the formula target divided by context equals result. But the context is a little different now. It's the width of the element itself and not the width of the parent element like it is for width and margin. The only caveat to that is if the element itself doesn't have a width defined, you use the width of its parent. Or you can determine the width of itself by determining the width of the parent. If you're using the box sizing property with the border box value, the padding is no longer factored in to the box model width of the element. Therefore, you can leave it as a pixel length and just convert the width and margin to a percentage. So box sizing border box is definitely your friend. Let's search for some other edge cases by searching our CSS for the keyword of margin. So I'm not worried about bottom or top margin. We already have that left margin. We're not worried about zero. Now auto for left and right, that doesn't need to be converted to a percentage because auto is automatically calculating the width based on the space available. So it's as good as a percentage. So we're good there. Not worried about margin bottoms, not worried about margin tops, but we are worried about this guy. This content block figure has a margin of 30 pixels. It's using the single value. So that means the top, bottom, left, and right are all 30 pixels. So we only want to change the left and right. So what we can do is we can change that to 30 pixels, 30 pixels. And that's the same. This is the top and bottom. The second value is the left and right. In content block figure, remember that is the element that wraps around our image. So we're actually trying to turn this margin right and margin left into a percentage. Content block figure, so we're looking at figure, is inside of a wrapper. So again, we know the wrapper is 960 pixels. So, so far our context has been very easy to determine because our context has always been the wrapper. So we'll make a note, 30 pixels, 
divided by 960 pixels, or really we can just say 3960. That's as good. 30 divided by 960, 03125, which is 3.125%. So we'll save that. We'll look at that in the browser. And now if we pay really close attention to our margin left and right around that image, we can see it's getting a little bit wider and a little bit narrower as the browser window shrinks. So now everywhere but the nav, all hard pixel lengths are percentages. Not everything has to be a percentage for responsive web design to work. We made a judgment call that we'd handle the navigation without percentage widths. That is true for the fluid grid and so many other decisions for responsive design. There really isn't a one-size-fits-all solution. Each component of your website needs to be thought out thoroughly from desktop down to mobile, or even better yet, starting from mobile and up through desktop. So step one, creating the fluid grids, is complete for now. This is an important step because it ensures our design will start to fit nicely on all screen sizes. In the next video, we'll look at flexible images.